Hello everybody and welcome to another Pepperstone Learn It Live webinar. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at how to day trade stock market indices. So great subject, very close to my heart and also Tyrone's who we have here joining us from FX Evolution. How are you Ty? Hi everyone and yeah, hello Thomas. Yeah, looking forward to tonight. Um, indices are something that we absolutely love. We do a lot of trading on um, and now that you know, Pepperstone are really starting to you know make some good grounds with um, all, a lot of the indices they're covering, it's a very opportune time for everybody to understand just how powerful they can be, especially on a day trading basis. So looking forward to getting into it tonight. So just before we get started, as usual, uh, the information provided in these videos has been produced by a third party and does not reflect the opinion of Pepperstone. The information has not been provided without any alteration or verification. And of course, it should be considered only general in nature. Please uh, consider seeking financial advice uh, if necessary before making any decisions. Okay, so what are we going to be covering today, Ty? We're going to be looking at quite a few things. We're going to be taking a look and identifying several stock industry patterns. So as many long time Learn It Live webinar attendees will know, we love our patterns, we love our price action, and it really doesn't change much when it comes to trading indices. Uh, you just need to understand a little bit about opens, closes, things like that, which we'll talk about. Then we've got analyzing support and resistance areas, very important in terms of stock markets and indices. Always good to know your support resistances and particularly the larger time frame ones and then drill down into the smaller time frame ones when you're day trading. The times of day to trade, very important, very key to know a few differences with indice trading. Uh, each indice you'll need to know certain things, so uh, something to check out. How the markets react during opens and closes, market conditions to look for before using uh, any kind of trading strategy, and then of course MetaTrader 5, a couple of tips and tricks if we have time and a Q&A. So before we even get started, Ty, I actually want to go straight into having a look at the market. And I actually want to talk about how each market can look slightly differently. So even though stock markets, of course, all generally trend up over time, let me just quickly move this, uh, we, we can see different markets doing different things. Uh, throughout the Western world and throughout the, the entire world. So here we've got the US 500 and I think probably most people, it's on a weekly chart, most people will agree we're in quite a large uptrend on this particular time frame. So let me just quickly get the pen out and you can see, you know, it's definitely got a series of high highs, high lows for quite a long time. We had that big shock kind of crash that came in through last year at the end into Christmas over the trade war and of course, we can see already start to see potentially the power of this green moving average and this is the 200 moving average it's definitely one that if you don't have it on your indices chart list you should definitely add it and the red one is 20 and the blue one is 50. so all of these three indices very very essential we think they're great when it comes to trading indices like forex and uh yeah i mean ty what do you think about the us 500 it's definitely been a good couple of years hasn't it Certainly has. Uh, look, it's been really, for anyone who's been trading the technicals on this, you've had a really, really good run, um, as have we. But it is the catalyst for, um, yeah, it's probably one of the m most watched indices in the world, as we've probably mentioned. Um, it's yeah, basically infallible when it comes to being able to ma manipulate this market. And I think that's probably the, the key to indices, isn't it, Thomas, that we know, yeah, for absolute fact, it's nearly impossible to actually manipulate on a small time mm. basis, like some of the big cross-currency pairs can be. So it's very, very important. And I think it gives you a lot of confidence when you know that a lot of people are looking at it, a lot of people are seeing it. Um, it's infallible in, in a sense that, you know, big money um, can't manipulate it. Big money can certainly move it, but it's not going to be able to um, move in a direction as a as a false move, if you like. So, yeah, we absolutely love it. And the, the, they don't come bigger than the S&P 500. So, as we saw, the US 500 definitely in an uptrend over the longer term. And then, of course, we look at something like the UK 100 with the Brexit, the concerns over growth, a lot of problems potentially in the economy that need to be considered when you're trading indices. And you can see here, same kind of time period, same weekly chart, a total different story, more of a flat kind of market. And that brings us back in. We'll go quickly back into the slides 
Uh, and the reason why I want to mention that is because when it comes to, to trading indices, you really need to be able to recognize market conditions and you also need to understand what is an indice. So an indice is, let's go with the ASX 200. The ASX 200 is the top 200 stocks in Australia by market cap, so market size. And it's important to know that because when you understand that there's 200 stocks, and this is obviously basic to many people, that those 200 stocks employ thousands, if not millions of people to actually make money for that company. So what do we think is gonna happen over the longer term of an indice, um, indice's life? Is it going to probably go up over the you know, next 10, 20, 30 years? Most likely it will because every one of those companies inside that indice is trying to make more money every single year. So there is a bias in what indices will generally do over the longer term, and that is that they are usually bullish over the longer term. So many people don't consider that basic fact. Uh, and Ty, I mean, it's amazing how many people don't fo focus on that, but it does present that if you are holding a position long, it will generally, uh, you know, hopefully turn into a profit at some point over a 10 to 20 year period, uh, because the indice is biased towards the buy side. Now in currency trading, it's different. Currency trading uh, doesn't really have a fair value. Uh, so I just wanna make sure everyone has a voice, by the way, I've just got two people that say they don't. So if you can uh, just type in the comments room, that'd be great. Uh, but yeah, currency value is, is not really, it's a floating value. It can go up and down and there's no fair value. It's just a fair value at that time. Um, very distinctive difference between indice trading and currency. Current indices will generally go up over time. Uh, another thing is you need to be recognizing whether it's channeling or range bound. We talk about this all the time. Uh, if it's channeling and you recognize a channel pattern, you can use your day trading strategy to take advantage of that channel. If it's trending, then you will generally try to use your day trading strategy in the direction of the trend. So Ty, what are your thoughts on indices in terms of channeling and trending markets? Uh, you, I think you'd agree with me that they are generally biased towards the upside, but when the sells come in, what happens? Yeah, oh, most definitely. Like when the sells come in, they really, really do come in because, yeah, and probably a, a short explanation yeah. of that is, especially when, we, when we're going um, testing new highs in particular, um, when the market does start to pull back, the thing with the stock market is a lot of people are very heavily leveraged in it. So they're using margin loans to basically make sure that um, yeah, they're not missing out on, on the big move, if you like. So what tends to happen is people, you know, completely over leverage themselves um, at probably the worst possible time, which is most of the time um, at the, the highs of the market because they've got the fear of missing out. So it's really, really important to, to know that what happens when the market does pull back, it starts to push down on uh, margin loans, okay? So people go into a margin call, what, what is known as a margin call. Generally, it gives about a 24 hour notice. They've either got to fix their position in that time or um, they've got to sell down some of the stock. Now, if they don't sell down the stock, they, um, they get automatically closed out by their broker. So it stands to reason then that when, you know, two or three days of pretty heavy selling happens in a row, on, um, in a stock market, it, it basically becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that everybody's trades who can't um, keep up with the margin calls are being sold out and it actually forces the market down. So the market just completely capitulates purely because, not because people are, are wanting to sell, but they're forced to because basically the broker's closing them out because they can't meet their margin requirements. So that happens a lot. It doesn't happen so much in, in currency as it does in the stock market because the stock market margin calls uh, happen very, they're very tight actually. Like uh, generally the leverage is very, very low. Uh, people over leverage because they think the market can't stop. They start to listen to the noise on the television. Of course, the minute uh, that happens, that's generally when we see the pullback. So the short, the shorts can be very, very aggressive and they are definitely a self-fulfilling prophecy when they do start to really, when the, when the rot sets in, we like to call it. So certainly one to watch, but yeah, um, just touching on what Thomas said. Yeah, does it always go um, up? You know, a lot of the time indices are biased to continue going up. You know, they've, I think they've got some, you know, it's, it's four or five percent over a, a 10 rolling year period, um, supposedly, and it's been doing that for a very, very long time. So, you know, it's not like a currency pair that does fluctuate up and down. 
that is the one thing you need to be you know, bear in mind in an indice. And I think, in a sense, Thomas, it's actually what makes it easier to trade. It is actually, yeah. By having a, a bias of any kind, we always talk about it. Trend is your friend, and when you trade the trend, you generally do better. The bias helps you. So even if you were trading indices and you were a relative uh, newbie to trading indices, if you see a double bottom on an indice, and that double bottom obviously would I would be the idea that it's going long. Generally speaking, if you held that position for a longer period of time or it went bad and it may, may come good later on, it will usually uh, be at a higher point over at some point over the next couple of years. And that's always important to know that there is that bias because the shorts, while they can be incredibly aggressive, can also V-shape reverse or go in the opposite direction. So you really need to be um, sharp and sweet when it comes to your take profits and your stop losses. And that's why day trading shorts is particularly good because you're taking advantage of that quick momentum in the market. So another thing, once we've analyzed the market, we've decided whether it's range bound or trending, which you can do by either recognizing channels. We've talked a lot about that in previous webinars. So check them out on Pepperstone's YouTube channel and uh, just look for the ones on patterns and price action. We have covered that quite a lot of detail. Uh, times of day to trade. So in the Australian market, session opens. Now that's a time of quite a lot of activity and you will usually see a spike in terms of the futures or the indices uh, market when that session opens. So from 10 o'clock in the morning Australian time, um, Sydney time, Melbourne time, till 10 past 10, all of the stocks are opening. Now, a lot of people think that all the stocks just open at 10 o'clock and that's how they are. It actually is segmented. So throughout that time, different like A to C, C, et cetera, et cetera, they open up over different times in that first 10 minutes. And that allows the market to not have like a shock reaction. But the futures will be trading, which is the indices. They will be trading based on the perception of the first open. And then, of course, as the other stocks open, you will see that volatility come in. So very important to know that not all stocks just open at 10 o'clock. They actually open over that first period. And little known to people, a lot of big traders actually don't trade the open. They trade the close. So they trade that session close, which happens at 4 o'clock. And then we've got what's called the match period. So the match period happens between 4 and 10 past 4. So at 10 past 4, uh, we basically see the real close of the generalized market and of course Pepperstone's indices will continue trading. Uh, but a lot of the trades do happen at the end of the day. That's when we get matches, that's when the big super funds uh, do a lot of their investment that they need to do for the day and make their decisions. It's not often done at the start, is it Ty? No, that's right. No, exactly right. Um, and it, again, it's very important to understand you know, when you are trading which ones are opening uh, and when. The big money does seem to flow at the end of the day, and we we see that a lot in the stock market in Australia, especially. But it probably, um, in a sense, leads the way for for London as well. Like it's very different to um, the the currency opens. Like you see, yeah, you know, it's it's been madness most of the time when the first candles start to open on a London open. As yeah, you know, a lot of people are aware, if you're used to trading currencies, you get to see really really big movements. <laughs> it happens very very quickly. Um, a lot of the time in the stock market, that's generally the the very low money. So, um, yeah, knowing your opening hours, if you are going to focus, what I, what we always suggest actually, is if you are going to focus on, you know, trading some indices, having a very clear picture of when the actual stock market opens. Now, just bear in mind that it is different. It's not the same as currency. So London might, London open might open at 8 a.m. Uh, London time for the currencies, but the stock market doesn't actually open at that time. So it's actually really, it's a really important point to know that, you know, the stock market's actually, as, as a rule, open at 10 a.m. on the day. I think not 9.30 in New York, but I think for the most part, they open at, um, our one especially opens at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So the industry doesn't really start to play the game um, until the actual market opens, not so much when the banks open. So something to definitely keep an eye on. Simon's got a question here just about 4 to 4.10, which time? So 4 o'clock's the real close and the last 10 minutes is what's called the match time um, so that means that basically all the large corporations and companies uh, you don't actually see what the price of the index is anymore but they match all their positions and that's that match time so a lot of people don't understand that that exists but yeah four o'clock is technically the close and then there's that match time uh, so i just got up on the screen horizontal resistance and horizontal support 
and just a couple of quick examples of what they might look like. We do assume as part of this webinar that everybody has a bit of an idea about this, but if you do not know how to look at channels or look for resistance and support, we recommend you absolutely go and watch our previous webinars and find out about this stuff. Um, now, there are other chart patterns, Ty. So there's the double bottom, one of my favorites, and I've got some examples in the indices of the ASX in a minute to have a look at there. The ascending triangle or descending triangle, the inverse head and shoulders or head and shoulders, and then of course the flag patterns. And all of these happen a lot in indices trading and they're incredibly powerful patterns. In particular, I love the double bottom and the inverse head and shoulders and flag. And I like them because they're all more, or in this case, the flag to the upside, because they're all biased in the direction of where indice generally will move. So inverse head and shoulders, double bottoms, really great kind of trades. So let's just jump into the market tie. Have a quick look here. Now I've got the Oz 200 15 minute and I've just quickly highlighted a zone over here. So you can see, and we'll zoom this in, that we've got a low followed by an intervening trough and that's double bottom. And then of course we've got our nice, beautiful close above. So the great thing about double bottoms is you can just take the distance of the range and then of course that can be your take profit but the other beautiful thing about double bottom is if you are in one you can potentially think about well where is this zone is this zone at a key level could i potentially leave this trade on a little bit further or scale out of the trade and leave some of my trade on for upwards momentum so here over here we have big sell-off that happened last week uh, actually happened on the 2nd of December into the 3rd and we can see that we've got nice double bottom really strong kind of formation here nice break so when we've seen a sell off this hard and of course it's sold off it's then thought about a level so it's thought about this level and then it's broken through and we've also got that nice bullish hammer afterwards do you think that we could potentially leave some of this order on tie and maybe go for a little bit more than a standard double bottom pattern would. That's the power of the double bottom in indices is that if you find it at key levels and you also find it after a massive sell off or something, it may be a precursor to potentially a nice little recovery, which is what we've seen here. And we go out to the one hour and you notice a nice little recovery straight into the 200 on the one hour. And if we go out a little bit further, what you'll also notice is our next point, which is it's basically all happened at our little trend line, which is always a very, very key thing for indices trading. So Ty, what do you think about the double bottom? I think you'd agree with me that it's nice because of that slightly inbuilt bias towards the buy side. Yeah, definitely. Um, we as Look, anyone who follows us um, on any of our webinars knows that we love to trade patterns in the direction of the trend. So. You know, and generally, if we have a bias that the trend is going up, which quite often indices do for for long periods of time, we pay a lot of attention to anything that actually is a, a double bottom or an inverse head and shoulders or anything like that. It just makes so much more sense to us, um, and and they actually play out so much more as well, which actually makes a big difference, obviously. So, yeah, any pattern in the direction of the trend is always going to be better than one that is trying to reverse the trend. So. If you can identify them, um, you're going to have a far better chance of success. And indices give you that opportunity because they are generally biased to obviously the long, like we've discussed earlier, which you know is a real it's a real plus. Like I can't I can't begin to tell you. And it's not just patterns. Like it's also moving averages. Like a moving average crossover, you know, in the direction of a, of a longer trend, is generally so much more significant than you know just a, a normal currency pair that is basically floating around in a, in a big channel because we know that we are biased to a, a longer sustained trend. And also what we probably need to mention as well, there's so much to cover in indices. We can tell you, you can tell oh, we get quite is. excited <laughs> about them. Um, indices are also very, very cyclical um, in that quite often you see the same patterns and the same direction play out at certain times of the year. It's almost uncanny actually. And when you pick up on those and you can compare them to the years uh, gone by, you'd be really, really surprised at how often the same patterns happen year on year on year. Don't they, Thomas? Like we we love it. Like especially, you know, the holiday just gone is probably a perfect example. I mean, can we can we even have a look at that? 
Are you thought, talking about, sorry, Thanksgiving or? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we definitely can have a look. I'll just focus on this just one more minute before we, uh, we move on. Uh, the reason I wanted to uh, focus on this is we're talking about day trading, obviously. Uh, day trading requires that you're probably going to be making decisions on these smaller timeframes because you want to be in and out. But if you focus on, let's say, the daily time frame here, we've got this nice little trend line that's occurred. We can also see, and you'll notice I went to the line chart, that there's a clear zone through this point here where multiple resistances were hit. And there's, it makes sense that that would potentially be a level of support if it was hit considering it's kind of on that trend line. So we see all of those things. We start to paint a bit of a picture and then we go, okay, wow, let's see if we can find an opportunity. 6,600 level as well. Obviously with everything, there's that psychological factor, that human factor that comes into it. We love round numbers, you know, indices more than anything else. Look at that, just almost hits that 6,900 and then sells off. So the 100, incredibly important when it comes to indices. Every single one, you'll hear people mentioning years ago, they were saying, oh, the first time the Dow hits the 20,000, the first time the Dow hits the US 30 here, hits the 25,000. These kind of round numbers, they usually act as a support or a resistance for current uh, for indices. So 6,600 hit, nice little level of, of um, resistance previously. And of course, on the trend line, all points to, if we find a 15 minute or one hour pattern, we could be involved in that. And that's the type of thing we like to put in when it comes to trading. Now, as Ty mentioned, uh, and I think the S&P 500 is going to be the best scenario for this one, Ty, is yeah, that definitely. you've also got certain things that happen time and time again, and it's just a statistic. And that is that you often see into a, a, like a holiday period, like Thanksgiving, that the market will usually have a bit of bullish momentum, especially in the US. People are excited, people are happy about the holiday season. Who knows why? They're investing, they're pushing it up, and you see the market have an increase. And then often, once they come back from Thanksgiving, because that mark that week was positive on the indice, it will have a sell-off. And that seems to happen quite a lot and again, these things are, and you can break them down to statistics. So that's another cool thing about indices trading is you can literally have certain things that happen over time and time and time again. Did you want to mention anything more on Thanksgiving tie in terms of the, the sell off that happens often the week after? No, only that it's very, very predictable and we trade it a lot. <laughs> it's a good one. It's certainly, it's a good one to pay attention to. But probably more to the point though, uh, these little intricacies happen a lot more than you would think. And, and any research, if you want to do um, some research on it, you can go through and check all of the major dates um, on the indices and see how they play out year on year. And I think you'd be quite surprised. It can give you some really good clues. And uh, when you're onto it, it just makes your trading so much more powerful. Okay, so while we're on the US 500, just so we can talk through other strategies um, in terms of having that daily and then jumping down to the smaller time frames. Look, Tyrant, here we've got this resistance point, this 3, 000, around this 3,000. And when that was broken and they saw that little daily close out, it gives the day trader an opportunity. Two things kind of come into my mind straight away. One thing is, well, boy, we've broken past a, a very key resistance point and that's now been officially closed. Once it closes, it cannot be taken away in time, but it gives us the ability to say, well, what about a nice little roll reversal at that level? Is that an opportunity that we might be able to get in? So remember, we come into that day looking at this level here and then it comes down and it hits that roll reversal area. We can then dial that into a five minute, 15 minute chart look for smaller time frame changes of trend, look for double bottoms, look for inverse head and shoulders on the smaller time frame. look for any reason that might give us a clue that it looks to buy up and then buy that up for that day and of course get out of it at when it hits the previous peak or because we know that the indices are biased towards potentially the upside, we could also leave part of that order on and maybe go for a little bit more. So it gives us that ability by checking the daily and the weekly and the four hour to then dial down into the smaller timeframes once we've recognized key zones.
So I like that one in particular because that was a really good little resistance that had been broken. And we can see it happens time and time again. If we go back through any kind of period when resistances are broken, even this resistance up here, look how it breaks, it comes down. And yes, okay, it doesn't keep going on forever. And that may be sometimes how it happens, but it does test that period. Turns out that on the daily was also the 20 and there'd be some great opportunities on the smaller timeframes there. So whenever you see this, you've got a lot of indices to pick from. It's really great to be able to look at that daily, which is what most big indices traders do look at and then dial down from there. All right. We have a question here, actually. You might you want to just maybe answer that one live, Thomas? Because it's actually it is quite a good question. Which that, one? Um, the one that Victor has put through about the uh, influence of what the the Fed actually does in terms of interest rates and and how that actually plays out. Okay, so Victor says it's a pretty big question. A big influence in equities has been how the Fed positions itself. Example of last year's sell-off in December was when Jay Powell announced. Uh, they were going to raise interest rates. They had to backtrack, of course. How would you prepare slash hedge for such events or would you just stay out of the market ahead of such risk events? So it's a great question, Victor. Tyrone probably wants to answer a bit of this, um, but I will say that there's always news in the markets. Obviously, that was a big one and that was a big part of it. And then the trade war didn't help, um, or at least the perceived trade war at the time. Remember, people were putting a lot of risk on the market at that point. And I would say if you're a day trader, you can really take advantage of those situations. That will create a big sell-off. The big sell-off will generally be short, uh, generally be very sharp and it may present really good opportunities to be in that trend. Uh, but what you will need to recognize is that it's probably going to be also short lived because as you said, it was in regards to Jay Powell saying they were going to do an interest rate rise. Now they can very easily halt that or start dropping interest rates and that completely reverses the market and pushes it in the direction that you want it to be. So create more of a buying opportunity or short term day trading scalping opportunity to the sell side would be my answer there. Ty, what are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely uh, gives you opportunity on the scalping side. In terms of taking long-term positions um, on what the Fed may or may not do or what um, President Trump may or may not tweet, we we really do stick clear of that sort of thing. Just to answer the other part of your question, um, we stay out of look. We stay out of the market ahead of you know, risk events like that. Um, if we're looking at the longer term, but for the short term scalping or the day trading, if you like, um, it can be very, very beneficial. So I think it really comes down to which sort of a trader you are as to whether you're going to stay out of the market for that or whether you're going to try and take advantage of those very short and sharp moves. Um, look, you know, picking what the news result is or um, isn't going to be, yeah, you know, can be yeah you know, a bit of a dangerous game as I'm sure a lot of people are aware. So we always take the safe option on that one and basically just really let it play out and just play the technicals. But for those who are scalping, um, it adds the volatility and of course volatility gives you the moves that you need to get in and out of the, the short term scalps that you're getting into. So I think yeah, to answer that part of the question, it just comes down to which sort of a, a, a trader you really are. So here I've got the Hong Kong 50 up tie and it's just another, again, uh, more to do with the probably moving averages here. But we can see how the 200 moving average has kind of almost held this indice at bay and it's been doing it for a while. So we might have noticed that it's done it over here, gotten into trades for other reasons. Again, this is the weekly, I understand that. Um, and then of course, we see it hit it back over here. But what it does is that previous kind of respect, it may respect again, we see this nice, a bullish kind of uh, rejection that's coming on here and we can say okay well we see this does this is there any patterns on the smaller time frames for us to potentially get involved in so you can probably see a start a series of events we, we continuously are saying the same thing which is recognize on the larger time frames then once you hit key areas jump into the small time frames and start to look for the patterns the high highs the high lows and start to do your day trading but the 200 definitely has held the, uh, the HK50 and it's done that through all the news events as well. So remember, while there's all this noise going on, the technicals are still, relatively speaking, holding the position in the correct area. Uh, what 
will uh, sometimes happen is that there will be a fundamental event that will knock it around even more, but that's just statistics. You know, you're in trades, uh, you're in trades for shorter periods of time being a day trader and you should be able to get more opportunities, but you just recognize key areas and then focus on that on the smaller timeframes. Uh, just another question from Mark. Do we trade US 500 during uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time or stick to Aussie 200? Uh, so look, what will happen uh, with Pepperstone is, and Pepperstone has incredibly tight spreads on things like the NASDAQ, by the way, the NAS 100 is, is an amazing um, really tight spread kind of trade. Uh, but generally speaking, you're better off trading the indices usually during the time of day uh, that it's open because that's going to be the most activity. But I've found that that living in Australia, I mean, obviously the Aussie 200 is great, but you can still very easily trade the US 500. You're going to have a little bit harder time day trading um, indices that you aren't able to see open and close though, uh, because day trading involves that you kind of want to be in front of the computer, you want to set your alerts and you want to be in and out. Uh, so you do really want to focus on the indices that are open during your market. But we've got Hong Kong, we've got uh, the Nikkei, we've got so many here uh, that you can potentially look to trade. And then at night, of course, you can look to trade the European markets and the UK markets. So quite a lot of options there. I did just bring this NASDAQ up as well, Ty. I just wanted to mention that the NASDAQ, uh, while it's been an absolutely amazing <laughs> bullish, obviously, hold. Um, it, it does also present some pretty nice little opportunities and uh, had like, you know, quite a few little trades here. When it, when it started, you know, moving off and it started kind of being quite bullish, broke a new high around here, that's always going to be a nice little key area for you to focus on, especially when you see so many touches of the resistance. So you can see resistance, 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 resistance breaks through. So four hour, by the way, that breakthrough close, that can definitely be a straight buy opportunity. Um, when the markets break through like this and they've considered a level, they usually have done it for a reason. And when that, especially in the larger timeframes, and then you of course uh, can hold the position. And another thing I like to do is if I'm holding a position like this, what I might do is buy it on the four hour and then I might hold it until it hits my 50, just under the 50. So I might just track it with the 50 moving average and I wouldn't actually get hit out until this point here. Now, does it keep going? Yeah, it does. But that's a good one of being able to hold a position for a slightly longer period of time. So yeah, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 uh, or any of the indices, that's another little opportunity. Got the German DAX, oh sorry, German 30 here. Just wanted to bring this one up because I want to show a larger time frame kind of Nice little trade that happened. Uh, so we had a really nice little inverse head and shoulders here. Again, all this is doing is giving us a bias. I'm on the daily only to give me a bias on the smaller time frame. You can see that nice little roll reversal that happens. That gives us opportunities to take quite a lot of bullish trades all the way for completion of from the head to the neckline. So all the way up to here, we could be looking for buy opportunities on the smaller timeframes and taking advantage of this bigger timeframe pattern. Because it is, make no mistake, the bigger traders in indices are absolutely day, weekly, monthly. That's where all the big volume is. Uh, you're trying to take advantage of those bigger moves and then scalp in between. So consider larger time frame trend lines and patterns, obviously very important. Now with any trading strategy tie, we've also got, uh, you want to create like a business plan or you want to create some kind of plan. Uh, now that plan needs to take into consideration quite a few different reasons. Uh, we mentioned a few tonight. So obviously we mentioned things like the moving averages. We've mentioned the chart patterns. We haven't really come into indicators too much, but uh, the usual suspects, things like stochastic MACD, really great to have on there. Uh, and then of course we've got that price action. So price action is incredibly important and we need to know and understand our tools. So when are the session opens, make sure you have that on your screen and closes and also things like maybe uh, specific big news events you wanna know and 
potentially on top of that, you might even want to know a little bit about your market. So when do the big companies pay things like dividends? Uh, does that affect the market? What about seasonals, as Tyra mentioned, like Thanksgiving and uh, maybe certain times of the year that the market's weaker statistically? These kind of things give you a small edge. And when you're trading indices, it's, it's really important to have that edge if possible. Definitely. And the one thing about the indices is that it's really important to remember that the technicals play out probably even cleaner than they do in the in the currency, but it doesn't mean that you take shortcuts. What, what that actually means is you probably should be paying even more attention to, to the setups because they're generally going to be more consistent. But again, yeah, the Pressic system really breaks that down. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, you know, taking each step of these letters really make sure that you are focusing on every part of the moving market. And that, that is no difference, uh, no different for for indices, of course. So it, it pays particular attention. I find, you know, personally that the indicators especially are very, very solid, especially during the sessions. Like if you're going down to the timeframes that um, are relevant to the type of trade that you're placing for a scalp, um, there is, yeah, a lot of, yeah, really good opportunities uh, each and every day. So look, we've got a couple of questions. We've got quite a few questions actually that we can probably answer. And that's why I did want to go to questions. Um, by the way, anybody that is having problems with sound, I know some people seem to be coming in through like a web platform tonight, and uh, that one seems to be the one that's causing a few issues. So uh, don't worry, we record these sessions. They will be on Pepperstone's YouTube, and you should also get a recording uh, automatically on email uh, of this session. So you can go back over it. But uh, yeah, Ty, there's some great questions here. Uh, I'll answer one and then you can go to the next one if you'd like. Sure. I'll do the one that says, okay, so what's the easiest US indice to trade? Um, and what is the easiest for the European market to trade? I find the US 30 very volatile and huge moves can be very scary. So the US 30, look, the one thing about the US 30 is it's only 30 companies. So the US 30 is not its proper name. I guess we call it the Dow as well. <laughs> um, but the main reason is because it is a smaller amount of companies. And while they are obviously the biggest companies, um, they haven't been performing necessarily as well as S&P 500 actually, which is top 500 companies. So I would say S&P 500 is really great for the US. Um, also, you know, NASDAQ uh, has been pretty good as well, but that will be more volatile because the tech stocks, uh, they have some interesting fundamentals and obviously when going's good, going's really great. And when it's not, oh wow, <laughs> they'll move, but it creates a lot of opportunity. And in the in Europe, look, I think the DAX has been pretty good and FTSE has been very range bound, as we mentioned before, because of the Brexit, but that might become a bit more volatile over the next uh, couple of months um, with everything going on there. And we may see it return back to form. And of course the Euro stocks is also not bad. So I'd say probably in Europe, Euro stocks and DAX are both great. Um, and they, they've been pretty, pretty good uh, technical kind of trading things. So uh, we'll have a look at the, there's a question here on um, what sort of a, a spread does Pepperstone have on the on the Nikkei, uh, UIG and use ProReal. Look, the thing with the, the Pepperstone um, indices is their, their spreads are amongst the tightest. Like we, we know that, like we don't compare them to, uh, to other platforms. Quite frankly, we don't actually you know, look at any other platforms. But my suggestion would be that, you know, we, we believe that they're um, amongst the tightest and they're, they're the easiest to deal with. But if you have um, any issues, if you're looking at an industry somewhere else where you think the spreads are tighter, I would suggest that you actually uh, bring that up. Because I know Pepperstone are always at the forefront of trying to um, get the best possible spreads. So, and as far as we're concerned, um, they are they are amongst the tightest. So if you see anything that that you think is comparable or, or better, I would certainly um, let Pepperstone know because I know they'll do um, yeah, everything in their power to, to remain the most competitive because they are very proud of their um, indices. It's a very big growing market and they, they do want to dominate the space. And of course, that is offering the best service possible. So if you do see anything that um, is potentially rivaling it, please let them know because I know that they'll do everything in their power to remain uh, the best in the field. Got another question here, Ty, and it's to do with, uh, would you have some guidelines for how to read indices opens? I hear a lot about uh, how about it and I am comfortable about different session opens in FX space. However, not familiar with the dynamics that could offer high probability opportunities and equities. So with indices, yeah, look, I think one thing is it's it's specific to each indices. It's like that nuance kind of trade. So in the Australian market, let's talk about that. 
the US 500 absolutely really still does pretty much rule our market. So the US 500 might have a great night and then people expect maybe our market to have a great open and sometimes you'll see because of the technicals it might be underneath resistance and you'll see that resistance break in the open and then it will have like a cool off period. So what might happen is actually it'll break in the open and then between maybe 11 and 12 o'clock, which is more that margin call time, you might actually see a little bit of a cool off where it comes down and does the roll reversal and hits that previous resistance and that could be your opportunity. Sometimes also they misprice the opens. So it's not actually a misprice, but what will happen is the Australian market won't move as sharply. And often I find this happens with the short side tie where you've had a big sell off, let's say in the US, and the Australian market futures open, but they don't open as weak as you would think they would in terms of the indices. And then all of a sudden, you just see this massive sell off straight after the open and it just goes, you know, 30, 40 points. So it's all nuance. It's not obviously fully statistics, but you will start to notice things. So watch the opens would be my suggestion there. Having, uh, I've got a couple of questions here in regard to what the market's currently doing. Look, we we touch on that, guys, in the in the next webinar that we run. We run um, an FX Evolution webinar at uh, 9 p.m., which is in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to pop the link in the in the window to the audience. So if anybody would like to join us in that one, that's when we actually look at the live markets and um and do an analysis on what's happening. Uh, in the here and the now. So I've posted that in the window. So for anyone who'd like to join that, just click on the, the link and register for that webinar. That's when we talk about the um, the actual current markets. A couple of other quick questions. Uh, in case you're trading the one hour time frame, do you, what do you uh, have to look for on the four hour time frames or trading the four hour time frame? What do you have to look for on the daily time frames? Uh, horizontal support resistance, trend lines, big time frame moving averages, all very key. So go back over the video, have a look at that ASX 200 uh, one example. I think that's a great example for you to look at in the future, Fred. And we've got, uh, yep, ASX 200, here's a good question. ASX is open to trade from 950 to 430, then open again from 510 to double zero in CFDs. Um, how to trade uh, the period after the stock market is closed. So you definitely can with the, indices i found that you can trade uh, a bit later obviously it has that little bit of a close period uh, but generally it's it's uh, pretty open so you should be able to trade it throughout the night and enter positions uh, and you will uh, if you you can take the profit as well i've got another question here can you take profit or sell um, or stop trades after the closes and opens yes you can with these kind of indices there will be slight close periods and i suggest you talk to uh, pepperstone about getting those times uh, but yeah, absolutely you can. All right, Ty, well, look, hopefully that helps a little bit. We're trying to cover a little bit today and uh, we do hope that helps people understand maybe how to day trade indices. But I think the key to get out of today is look at the slightly larger timeframes, recognize an opportunity, jump into the smaller timeframes, place the day, place the day trades that you want to place if the right opportunity presents. And uh, that, that would be kind of a key to, I guess, some of our success. And then there's so many great things that you can start to find out about indices. You can learn so many amazing things for all of your life. And, um, you know, we love them. And things like the VIX, the VIX is here. I didn't even mention that tonight, but that's the volatility index. Um, it's an amazing uh, thing to understand as well. So go check that out. And once you start to bring it all together, it'll make a lot more sense. And you guys will have a great time. All right, thank you very much. We might see you in a few minutes. Otherwise, we will see everybody next year at the Pepperstone Learn It Live series. And we wish everybody a great festive season. Hopefully everyone spends a lot of time with their family over Christmas and uh, New Year. And Tyron, do you have anything to say? Yeah, just that, look, yeah, thanks for joining us. I know a lot of you guys are regulars. So thank you for joining us to all at all of the webinars that we've been doing. 
um, throughout this year. Yeah, we're looking forward to yeah a big 2020. I know um, Purpose Center's got a lot in store, but don't ever um, feel afraid to actually voice your topics that you'd like covered. They, I know they're all very interested in covering what the people really want. So yeah, feel free to contact your Purpose Stone support people and let them know what topics you'd like covered in these webinars because we're we're basically here to accommodate what people want to learn. So. Yeah, thank you again for joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you all in about 15 minutes or um, early next year. All right, thank you very much everybody. Have a great holiday period and we'll see you in the new year or in 15 minutes. Bye everybody. <laughs> Thanks guys.